When I was going to college, I had some friends who had a tutorial in Harlem, a ghetto. And so I joined as a tutor, soon became a staff member of the Northern Student Movement. Some people from down south came north and told us of the horrendous activities that were going on there. Mothers were being beaten. The freedom fighters went down in the bus and soon after I went down with my best friend who was the warlord of a gang. He had a trouble following the nonviolent model that was based on Gandhi's nonviolent movement. We went down south, we were beaten, put in jail for our beliefs, and that helped to change the world to make a better place. Because it said, if you see an injustice and you stand by and don't do anything about it, you're a part of the injustice. Thomas Jefferson said it, Mao Zedong said it, Martin Luther King said it. That got me ready to meet Prabhupada. I was on the front lines. We actually made our wills out because we didn't, as young men, we made our wills out because we didn't know if we would be alive. Uh, I've written about in my books how we were attacked and I actually on a march had to bring one of our workers to the hospital and mothers with babies holding their babies were cursing at us. And then they realized what a horrible thing they did. And then they started cursing at us again. They were challenging times, but the message was correct and it made the world a better place. I soon then came to San Francisco. I became a hippie and uh, I experimented in many psychotropics, met all the mentors, gurus. I was having a great time, free love, free everything. Then I met Prabhupada, a 70 year old man who was telling me not to have fun anymore. Why would I do that? He was charming. He was sweet. He was funny. He was compassionate. He was another father figure. He knew exactly how to charm us. He was on the mountain. He was seeing a struggle up the mountain as barbarians. He was making barbarians into Brahmins. He was teaching us regulative principles. He was teaching us another way of life. Slowly, a purification process was going on. He knew exactly how to talk to each one of us, like Krishna, charming, all the gopis at the rasa dance. Each of us were different. Some Vietnam vets, machine gunners, Prabhupada charmed it. So that's what happened. I was part of the civil rights movement. I was searching for spiritual life. I tried many things. It wasn't a capricious search. I was very serious. We were all very serious. We even wore our costumes of spirituality. I met, as I say, many of the gurus, many of the mentors. But when I met Prabhupada, then I knew this is the one for me. I left the hedonist, hedonistic way of life. And Prabhupada was there. We had no idea of a movement. It was the Swamiji amongst us. He sat on the ground with us. The other gurus I met seemed more elitist. 
distant, impersonal. So I met Prabhupada. And as I said, he charmed me. And soon after, I joined with him. Isn't it true that even before you met Prabhupada, you started to do service with your god brothers that told you about him? <clears throat> there wasn't too many god brothers. Uh, I was the seventh or eighth initiated disciple, but uh, Mukunda came and he told us about the Swami and Jamuna met him. Jamuna went to New York to her sister Janaki's wedding. She met Swamiji. Swamiji said, it is the custom for you to cook for your sister's wedding. Jamuna was already a great cook. Prabhupada taught her how to cook. She touched herself on the shoulder. Prabhupada said, we don't touch ourselves when we cook. Go wash your hands. About an hour later, Jamuna said, Swamiji, can I go smoke a cigarette? He said, go wash your hands. Then she tasted the prasadam. 99.99% .99 of people when they cook taste it. He said, we don't taste it for Krishna. Go wash your hands. She thought that was the first mantra, go wash your hands. She came back and told me, oh, then she was charmed. At first she wasn't, especially when he said, go lie down and take rest. She came back and said, I met this Swami, he's wonderful. Then Mukunda came. Then we started service. We, we found the storefront temple uh, we got ready for Prabhupada to come. So at the, in, in that way, before I met him, uh, I actually uh, was serving that way. Imagine a Rukmini that just heard about Krishna and started, you know, made a decision. It seemed like you, just through Mukunda's sincerity and Yamuna's experience, your faith was growing already. Yes, but it wasn't quite as easy as Rukmini's or Jivananda, who came from Texas and joined immediately. I was still a rebel. I had some resistance. Even up to the time of initiation, I wasn't sure. And then I decided and everyone went, oh, good. And we asked Prabhupada when... Uh, should we get initiated? Uh, we asked him, would you marry us? He said, no, well, first you must get initiated. Oh, the sense of surrender. What am I getting into? Uh, so when do you want us to get uh, initiated? Tomorrow. He didn't want to let my mind, Chenchala, go. Okay, so Janaki made oleo margin instead of ghee fruit box wood for the fire. It didn't go so well at first, but his golden lotus hands made the fire. It sputtered into flame. Shama Devi was initiated with us, Hire Griva's wife. We went to him. There was only one dhoti and one sari in the movement. We tied them together. Hire Griva wanted his dhoti back. I said, no, seven days. When do you want us to get mar uh, uh, married? Tomorrow. There we are again with the oleo margin, the fruit box wood, and the woman who wanted to marry Prabhupada. Many hippie girls wanted to because we were thinking about it as a way to get his green card visa. But he said, no, no, I'm sannyasi. Then Nandarani and Dayananda said, well, we'll adopt you. He said, they will say, what am I doing with such an old son? And at any rate, the girl wanted to marry Prabhupada. 
Well, that's all right. We all fell in love with Prabhupada. But she also had a baby at the marriage. And the baby's head was hitting the ground. Bunk, 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 bunk. Prabhupada was transcendental. Everybody saw the baby's head hitting the ground. Finally, Prabhupada said, saw it and said, pick up baby. She was what's known as a space cadet back then. She realized, oh, my baby's head is hitting the floor. She picked up the baby. She was a mother. Uh, she wanted to marry Prabhupada. Prabhupada explained, no, I cannot marry you. This is the kind of thing that was going on in the storefront temple, a fire sacrifice, all sorts of people on mescaline really liking the fire more than the ceremony, the woman with the baby. Uh, it was really an interesting scene and Prabhupada was the ringmaster and tamed us all. Beautiful. Um... I understand that Jayananda joined around that time or sometime, and he became quite involved in the temple, became the president. Yes. Can you say, say anything about Jayananda, uh, what he was like? He was a little bit older. He had a job as a taxi cab driver. He didn't think he was very in scholarly or intelligent but he had an innate intelligence. he was shy to speak but he was convicted and he did he was a man of the people we would go out and get prashadam hey jim how are you doing we would go everybody he was friendly to everyone but most of all, he was a very hard worker. And by his example, we worked hard. He was convicted. He was a hard worker. He was a kind person. He was with me in my Radha Damodar bus and took care of the uh, Harinam. When we, I spoke in the colleges and he took the Harinam party out Jayananda Thakur, great devotee, mostly teaching by example. He didn't want any respect for himself. He respected everybody else. First class Vashnava, Jayananda Thakur, DJ. Thank you so much. Um, at some point, after the temple was going for some time, can you say some of the highlights of, of San Francisco, especially the Monta Rock Dance and all the things that were happening then? Alan Gensberg came. He's a friend of Prabhupada, had been in India. And they discussed having a benefit dance for our temple. And uh, we knew a lot of the bands. Sam uh, roomed with Rock Scully the manager of the Grateful Dead. So Grateful Dead said, we'll do it. I was a friend with Chet Helms and uh, there was a dog that lived with me and it used to go to Big Brother in the holding company's house. And they said, take your dog back. He's eating too much. So I knew Janice Joplin. So they came, Moby Grape, Quicksilver Messenger Service. They all donated their services at the Avalon Ballroom. The Mantra Rock was a great success. We, re we raised over $2,000 for our temple. Um, we were part of the community because people would be tripping all night and come to our temple to have breakfast and prasadam. It was actually known as a calming and peaceful alternative. And it was part of the fabric of the community. So, the, so our Radha Krishnan temple was very well known and very well loved in the community of San Francisco at the time. And as I was saying, Prabhupada was teaching us, you have to realize there was no movement. 
no cartels, no merdunga. Prabhupada would sit on the altar with a bongo drum. No deities, very few books, but we had Prabhupada, Swamiji, sitting amongst us, teaching us how to cook, teaching us purity, teaching us the prayers on a slate, on a, on a blackboard. There were no prayers. He was teaching, this is Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sabina Jinanda, Sri Advaita Gadaha, Sri Vasudev Gaur Bhaktivinda. He wrote it down for us. One day he said, this is Lord Chaitanya's appearance day. What I want you to do is go in the temple the whole day and chant. Chant Japa, chant Kirtan. And he gave us a manuscript of uh, teachings of Lord Chaitanya unpublished. Read this. He said, stay in the temple all day and fast, but like a kindly father. He said, if you have trouble fasting, here's some sugar candy. He gave to, to Mukunda. Here's some rock candy. If you can't fast, well, you can have this. It'll help you. He was the kindly father. Of all the qualities, it's his compassion that I remember. He bandaged my foot when it was cut. When I had typhoid fever, he requested every day how I'm doing. He encouraged our Food for Peace program that I got tons of food from the American government. He was always kindly. So he gave us the rock candy if we couldn't fast. We went in the temple. We chanted Japa. We chanted Kirtan. We read the book. Around noontime, Jayananda Thakur and Jivananda looked over to me and they made a signal with their chin Let's go outside. I said, the Swami said we should stay inside. They said, we have an idea. Let's go outside and chant outside where the Swami is. We had these clunky kind of cartels in the bongo drum. I said, we're going to get in trouble. The Swami told us to stay in the temple. He said, he was the temple president. He said, no, this is a good idea. Chaitra Guru entered their hearts. I said, okay, two Anandas is better than one Das. I'll go. We went to Prabhupada. It was in an apartment that I had at one time. He comes to the window, the second story window. We're chanting. And he, with his hand, he goes down like this. I said, I told you, Anandas, we're going to get in trouble. He told us to stay in the treble, temple, and now he's telling us to go back in the temple. So forlorn with, with chins down to the ground and feeling chastised, we went back to the temple down the hill. Upendra comes running out of the door. The Swamiji wants to see you. Oh, he wants to see us now. No one's been chastised yet except Malati one time. Uh-oh. So we go up to him. And he's got his beaming smile, his beautiful smile there. Uh, uh, he says, Lord Chaitanya is giving you the intelligence. It's called Chaitra Guru to, to chant outside the temple as well as inside the temple. This is called Harinam. Now I want you to do this in the streets of San Francisco every day. And that was the start of the Harinam in San Francisco. Beautiful. Um, there was a place called Morning Star where uh, a, a guy from the Limelighters, Lou Godley, started a commune and a lot of young people, from, hippies from San Francisco, went back and forth. A couple of the young men from that place, uh, Tamal Krishnamaraj and Vishnu John, started coming to the temple. Uh, Tamal Krishnamaraj has a lot of disciples here in Houston, and I just wanted to know uh, what your, your your first impression was of these two guys, 
Tamal Krishna Maharaj and Vishnu John when they started coming around to the temple? Um, I went to Morningstar the first time with Prabhupada, uh, the Swami, and uh, I heard Tamal in a tree playing the flute, but didn't see him. And then Vishnu John, Rabadinanda, and Madhavisa, they were just some of the people that were just milling around. There was uh, uh, some self subsistent farming. So I really didn't get to know them until they came to San Francisco. Although Madhavisa Maharaj soon met me and I gave him a picture of Krishna, Gopal Krishna, and told, uh, suggested he offered food before he eats it. And he took that picture to Big Sur and then became a devotee. So out of that morning star was Rabadi Nandan, Madhavisa, Vishnu Jana, and Tamal. Now, when they came to the San Francisco, we became friends. Vishnu John came in with two girls and a 12 string guitar, and he played it beautifully. And Tamal and I became friends, and he, we used to invite him to dinner and play tapes with Prabhupada. And he, I noticed this person has a, a very good attention span. He was actually listening to the whole tape. So Tamal, uh, Vishnu Janan, all of them became friends, but especially Tamal and Vishnu Jana became friends with me. They were quite an odd couple, but they uh, supported each other in, in their different devotions. One time, uh, then Tamal came to London and he came to India and we served a long time together. We have pastimes. Vishnu Jana also, one time I remember though, we were all going to India and we're on the airplane and I was sitting next to Vishnu John. Suddenly he got up and started chanting and everybody, because his chanting so beautiful, everybody started chant chanting and dancing in the aisles and the whole plane was tipping and the pilots and the stewardess were coming in and said, no, no. And we thought it's a good day to die. <laughs> And <laughs> so they said, please, please. But Vishnu John started a rousing kirtan in the airplane. I remember that. So, yes, they became my friends from Morningstar Ranch. And of course, they're great devotees. I can't hear you. And the next major, it was a major thing in our movement when Prabhupada wanted you to go to London and the three couples went. Can you tell us about some of the challenges and uh, victories that you encountered in going to London for Prabhupada? The first thing was that if you didn't have a return ticket and enough Lakshmi money, they wouldn't let you in. We had uh, $50 that Prabhupada produced from someplace like a magician. It wasn't the first, it wasn't the last time he gave me money from like a magician from someplace. $50 from Prabhupada and a thousand dollars from Samashinda when he was uh, arrested for for drugs, they gave him the money back. So we had a thousand dollars and fifty. And so first two couples went. Uh, actually, Samashinda Malati and Saraswati went with the thousand fifty dollars, and then they sent it to myself and Jamuna in Amsterdam, and then we went. Well, we have one thousand and forty dollars, and. Then we sent it to Mukunda. We have $1,030. You know, the bank took their cut. So that was the first challenge to get in there. Then we didn't have, we had one name from Allen Ginsberg, a member of parliament, and a doctor's name. And so we went to the doctor and he left. 
And soon we knew it was in the suburbs that we should get in the middle of London. So we met some people from the underground newspaper and started writing articles about Krishna consciousness. I did a two part series of Prahlad with paintings that Gorsunder and Govindadasi did. Jamunan did a Sanskrit cover. We started doing Kirtan all over London. Soon we became well known and well liked. We were given a warehouse where the underground newspaper was. They moved down the street, and so we were in a cold water uh, warehouse where they kept their uh, magazines. And on the top floor was Michael X, the black Muslim, and a dark room. So we had one floor for a temple, one floor for sleeping, and Malati slept on the bottom floor in a refrigerator box that Sam Mishinda made with a window. Because the black Muslims were incompatible with our temple, they asked me to ask him to move because I had already heard Malcolm X during my civil rights years and I could speak his language. I did encourage him to move. Uh, basically, I told him we're going to do, we're doing kirtan at 3.30 every morning and maybe you should find another crib, another place to live, which he did. We remained friends. I got him out of jail. That's a whole other story. But now we had the temple in London. It was around the corner from the arts laboratory where all the people hung out in London. All classes, it was the place where arts, film, music, events were happening. And we chanted there once or twice a week. We were also feeding squatters and homeless people. So we were starting to get well known in, in London. And then we said, actually our only plan is we want to meet the Beatles. We tried to meet the Beatles. We brought them things to the office and Peter Asher, their artist and repertoire person threw all our stuff in the rubbish bin. Apple that wound up and walked and we put the Hare Krishna mantra on it. We couldn't get to see the Beatles. Then a contingent from California came. Rock Scully, Danny Rifkin, the managers of the Grateful Dead, Ken Kesey, who is an old friend of mine from San Francisco, and uh, <clears throat> Some Hell's Angels, a notorious motorcycle gang that did horrendous things. They killed people, they beat people up, but they were also part of the community. And they lived next door to our temple, and we used to uh, lend them sugar if they were out of sugar. They fed people, we fed people. So the Hell's Angels were known to us, and they came in a contingent. They brought two motorcycles on the airplane. We made them take their boots off at the door. Even Hell's Angels get jet lag. We fed them sumptuous feed. Jamuna, Malati, Janaki. We fed everybody. The Hell's Angels fell asleep on the floor. The two women with them fell asleep on the floor. They had weapons. They had pocketbooks, and out of the pocketbooks were guns and brass knuckles and things like that. The motorcycles were downstairs. Ken Kesey, my old friend, and I talked. He said, what do you need a guru for? He was a rebel. I gave him the example. Do you want to go to a doctor that never studied or just is doing trial and error on you? He said, okay, I understand. 
then I said, you know what, Ken? Another translation of guru means heavy. And Ken said, oh, that's real heavy, man. Heavy, heavy, man. So, so the Hells Angels then also wanted to meet the Beatles. But they wanted to beat up the Beatles. And that's the day that Sam Ascendant went along with Rock Scully. He was chanting in the corner. John Lennon looks in. He was a Liverpoolian street lad. He could feel the vibes. There was a really crowded room, lots of people, and the Hells Angels were there to beat them up. John Lennon sensed it, and he left. Then uh, Ringo just followed him. Paul looks in. George saw Sam Machunda when he looked in and went straight for him, like the Red Sea parted. And he went, I've been wanting to meet you. And Sam Machunda said, yes, we've been wanting to meet you too. He said, please come to my house the day after tomorrow. We went there to a suburban house. Billy Preston was there on the organ, and George on the electric guitar, and Makunda on the Madanga, me on Cartals. We had a rousing kirtan. George loved kirtan, and he loved the philosophy. He lapped it up like a young brahmachari. It was difficult. He was still with all his rock and roll friends and partying, and he was somewhat of a womanizer at one point. But slowly he was taking to Krishna consciousness. And when he hung out with us, he was spending more time with us. His wife became jealous. He said, George, you're spending more time with them than with me. Actually, she eventually left and, and, and went to Eric Clapton. George was very angry. And then the next day they had tea together, you know. So George became a great friend a beautiful example of a devotee. He didn't care for the, the trappings of wealth and fame. He was funny. He was sweet. And he also had a service attitude. He knew that once he came out and declared himself, that that would help us as well. When, when George really became a devotee is when Prabhupada said, I'm the servant of the servant of Krishna. And George says, what does that make me? The servant of 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 Krishna. So because the Beatles joined, then we, then we went and lived on John Lennon's estate because he needed help. The seven of us now had 35. What to do? We had no place to stay. So we had to go to John Lennon's estate and he, he let us stay in the servants quarters. And then Prabhupada came to London and stayed with us. And he said, when they asked him, what have you come here to teach us? And he said, I've come here to teach what you've forgotten, love of God. So London followed San Francisco in the spirit of searching and not being afraid of searching for spiritual life and purity. And that's what George was doing, even though it was unpopular to his friends. And so after we met the Beatles, even though it was already magic, our temple started growing more and more. People from all walks of life came. The underground came, ambassadors came, and the Indian community came, the East, East Indian community. So London became very popular very soon and very successful. So you did amazing work in London, but Prabhupada then had the idea to bring Western devotees to India. And can you tell us about going to India? And I know it's impossible to cover so much, but can you give us an idea of what that was like? I met, I read Paramahansa Yogananda's book, Autobiography of a Yogi. And of all the chapters, including mystic cities and people who lived over a hundred years, the chapter that stood out was Krishna. When his brother said, let me test your faith. I'm going to send you to Vrindavan with no money. He went to Vrindavan. 
The people welcomed him. They fed him, gave him a ticket back. He, he mentioned that he was also a devotee to Krishna. And of that chapter, a picture of Krishna stood out. So in 1967, I asked Swamiji, can I go to Vrindavan? And he remembered it. And so because London was successful, now he wanted to, to uh, go to India and he put me in charge of a 17 uh, person party. A few people had gone ahead with Prabhupada, Rupanuga, Chutananda, Kirtananda went to Calcutta before. This was the second foray. <clears throat> we had to go through Egypt. 17 of us are in the airplane. Now we're in Egypt, Cairo, and it was the day after President Nasser was assassinated. The whole country was in turmoil. There was big posters of Nasser and black bunting all over the airport, black, people in black hitting their chest. They were in disarray. Giri Raj, not aware, takes the 16 other devotees on the turmoil of the airport and starts chanting. I had to make sure our uh, bag and baggage was transferred from the uh, Egyptian plane to the Indian one. I come back and there's Giri Raj, Jamuna, Dinana, chanting on the turmoil. I had a new camera. Prabhupada told us to bring cameras and slide projectors and irons and everything to India. We all had our full of equipment for our Indian foray. I'm taking a, a movie of the devotees chanting and suddenly I see some soldiers drooling with red eyes and bayonets on their rifles, charging towards the devotees. It was the day after Naso was killed. Chaitra Guru entered my heart. The film is funny because there's the devotees and then the camera's just dangling on my arm and I get between the soldiers and the devotees and I say, we're singing the praises of President Nassar. Then the charging soldiers became our guard. They put their bayonets in the air and surrounded us and said, sing as long as you want. This is Krishna consciousness, using your intuition for Krishna, your intelligence. Then we got to India and ah, oh, it was my mother country. It was so nice. And we went to a man in Bombay's house and soon, soon we were doing Harinam in the streets of Bombay. The history is long. Soon we went to Amritsar with Prabhupada to a conference of Mayavadis. I was banned from speaking. Uh, Giri Raj came. It was talking about variegatedness in the spiritual world. Soon Prabhupada started Pondo programs, tent programs. In Calcutta, I was called to oversee it with a telegram, Tamal wants you to oversee the, tamal, the Pondal program, Tamal ODs. It really meant to say Tamal Okade. Uh, I went there. It was, it was during the communist rebellion. Prabhupada calmed the, the, the communists with Brahma Samhita prayers. They objected to life members having seats for a rupee. Prabhupada said, let them sit in the seats. They had nothing to complain about. He calmed them. Then we did the Pondo program in Delhi. Fantastic. The poet laureate of India came, the scientists, the mayor, the ambassadors came. Then we did the Pandal in, in Bombay as well. So India was so vast, we had to have three GBCs. Of course, there was challenges. Challenges all the time, but with perseverance, and relying on Krishna, you can get through the challenges. There's so much. India was glorious. Prabhupada's glorious. Uh, 
I would I would like to now. I mean, there's so many stories, and uh, I do have my books. So if anybody wants to read further, you could. But now I'd like to talk about something else. We've been serving for many years, like Sarva Bhuma. Some devotees at the time of their elderly years need to be cared for because some people are not useful in the temples anymore. They're asked to leave and to fend them for themselves. So I decided if we could take care of cows and build planetariums, let us take care of devotees. We are a big enough movement that we can take care of devotees in every place, on the farms, the restaurants. A society is judged on how they take care of their people. So uh, can we view that film now, Winston? about the Vedic care charity and then? Yes, let me dial that up really quick. Okay. So I'll talk about it as you dial it up. So the idea was first, we can't do it all. We're a very small organization and we need funds, but it can be done in every part of the world, in every town and village. Okay, here's the film. The Vedic Care Cooperative was founded in 2015 out of a desire to provide care for ailing, isolated, forgotten and poor devotees, as well as spiritual seekers in general. Vedic Care was an idea to protect devotees, to care for devotees that have been giving their life for Krishna. Prabhupada said those who are giving their life for Krishna should be cared for. So this is the idea of idea of Vedic care, care for devotees, it's very important. The VCC is an international member-supported organization, an umbrella association, for facilitating retirement homes wherein residents will be offered kirtan, katar, classes, seminars, consulting, counseling, health plans and other creative projects. Our retirement resources will allow Vaishnavas to spend their later years in like-minded association, instead of being cared for in isolation, <coughs> reacting to the symptoms of sickness alone. Staffed hospice facilities and Vedic transition support will be available through this international cooperative, as well as assisting in homes and hospitals, with all care based on love and trust. With a focus on preventative care, we can ease the pain and suffering together. Transcending political, divisive factions, we will simply welcome those in need, concentrating on compassionate care. Since we began, we have cared for more than 100 devotees in need. We now have a solid team of qualified healthcare professionals assisting us with our efforts, and we are identifying more doctors, nurses and healthcare workers to join with us. We have been given a 23-room hospital facility in Vrindavan by the Muji Trust to repair and open as a holistic healing centre. VCC is, in addition, active in creating assisted living facilities in Vancouver, Canada, and New Govardhan Farm in Australia. We have two rooms in Nueva Vindavan, located in Spain. There are ongoing developments in Italy, Latvia, Lithuania, the Czech Republic, and in Alachua, Florida. The vision continues with residential communities that involve association and service, and then assisted living facilities with professional doctors and or nurses on the premises. We've also started a grassroots sewing business in Vrindavan, hiring five rich Basi women who are creating crafts to support themselves and raise funds for the VCC. In the United Kingdom, we started with a family atmosphere, and we at the VCC are continuing this with each other and everyone in a spirit of love and trust. In the UK we offer seminars, marriage counselling, women's and men's groups and also a phone health service line for medical, spiritual and psychological counselling. Many people need a professional, empathetic listener who is compassionate and understanding. All consultations are confidential. We may be spiritually advanced 
but not psychologically whole. Many childhood issues are unresolved and suppressed. Many people have low self-esteem issues because their parents and society did not nourish them. We at the VCC can help with both spiritual and psychological problems, mind, body and soul, in a holistic setting based on love and trust. Our UK team include the well-known Sri Karma Devi Dasi, Ram Nishringa Das, Surabi Kunj Devi Dasi, Bhakti Pradeep Parabrajaka Swami, Akrura Das, Pranaji, Bhakta Avatar Das, Sangeeta Devi Dasi, Mathura Leela Devi Dasi, Dr. Karol Chapman, also known as Chaitanya Priya Devi Dasi, Sachin Koshalia, Vishal Bidev, Subhadra Priya Devi Dasi, and Anadjavangi Devi Dasi. We at the VCC are also in close coordination with the Bhaktivedanta Mana authorities regarding the health of all devotees in the UK. We are currently inviting volunteers and ambassadors to join us to assess people in need, find places for care facilities and assist with fundraising. During this new challenge during the global pandemic, we, the Vedic Care Charitable Trust, are rebuilding and relaunching our service and efforts to not only care for those in need, but to continue our counselling, medical advice and to repair and build a hospital facility in Vrindavan. Thank you so much, Rabu. Um, you think it's a good time to ask for questions and answers from the audience? Sure. So, any to ask, just unmute yourself and ask Rabu. Hare, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, uh, Gurudas Prabhu, thank you very much uh, for wonderful, nice. Um, conversation with Sarvabhoma Prabhu and uh, two compliments, you know, one from my daughter and one from my son. I know they won't say it, they are shy. Uh, my daughter was saying that what an adventurous life I would like to live like that. <laughs> and my son was saying that this is a beautiful story, a nice movie uh, can be made out of this. Um, so thank you very <laughs> much. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I wanted to ask this question. Uh, would you, would you mind sharing a couple of pastimes with uh, uh, Yamuna Mataji's and, uh, you know, from her life? Yamuna is a great devotee. She was really the one who, with Prabhupada, inspired me. And over the years, she was very sincere in her Krishna consciousness. She was close with Prabhupada. He wanted to make her GBC, but she was more interested in cooking and doing deity worship. She didn't want to do politics, she told him. As the movement grew, some people complained that she was sitting at his feet. She would sit on one side and I would sit at the other. And Prabhupada said, no, no, it's all right. But soon due to public opinion, she had to move. This affected her. This is what happens when movements grew, including the civil rights movement. It could be a, a sports team or a corporation they start out hungry with ideals. And as movements go on, people become comfortable. They have titles. The original excitement and building spirit is not always there. But I say it should be there. No Vyavana, ever fresh. That was then and this is now. We can always serve. And she was an example of this. Uh, All I can say is that 
being married to her, we never argued. We were always serving. It wasn't a usual marriage because sometimes we weren't even together. But she, to the very end, was a great devotee. I saw her right before she left the planet in Alachua, Florida. I thought so many years had passed when I didn't see her and she was also not wanting to see me because Prabhupada said uh, she should not go to see me after she left and joined the ashram. But now years had passed. And I said in Florida, I want to see her. What are we going to talk about? Well, I thought we can chant together. Jamuna has a very soft side, but she also is Taurus the bull. She can be very stubborn and very directed and very expert and very detail oriented. What are we going to talk about? She comes out with bead bag in her hand. I had bead bag. She said, hi, Google. <laughs> it was our pet name. I said, hi, Jumi. My pet name for her. Years fell away of, of Vipra Lumba, of not seeing her. We spent the afternoon together. She was singing to flowers and birds. We talked about how we nursed a dog in Brindaban to health. It was a skinny, asthmatic dog, and we fed him every day. We recounted our times together. Then it was time for her to go. We sat in two rocking chairs, chanted some rounds together. She left. The next week, she left the planet. I'm gl very glad to do that because there was a closure that was missing. She was very important in my life. And just due to circumstances of life, we uh, separated. But that does not mean our love was not strong. And it doesn't mean our love does not endure. Thank you. Yes, and as far as your life, don't be afraid of the adventure. Don't be afraid to follow your heart. If I didn't follow my heart, I would have a boring, dull life. Instead, I've had so, so many adventures, more than 50 countries, fabulous adventures. It's still going on. That's the point. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> Follow your heart. Those those kids are wonderful kirtan singers, and you know they have so much to offer. They look like a lovely family. I would love to go and visit them sometime. Please, yes, yes please. <laughs> okay, when this thing ends, uh, let's talk. Let's talk about a visit in person. You're in Texas, is it? Yes, we are in Houston. Close to oh, Houston. Yeah, and no, I even want to go to Houston more than Dallas. Yeah, okay. Let's see what happens. Look forward to that. Thank you. Yes. Okay, you look like a wonderful family. So, what else? More questions? Uh, I wanted to ask. I'll, I'll tell you two pastimes of Prabhupada. One, I was in Vishakapatnam, and uh, I was chanting in the temple. And in India, you know, you put one shoe on one side of the temple and one shoe on the other, because monkeys or people don't steal one shoe. Not just in India, all over now. One shoe on one side, one shoe. They stole my father's shoes. At any rate, there goes Prabhupada. It's in Vishakapatnam. I'm following him without shoes. There's barnacles and shells. I'm walking gingerly. 
He's looking at me like, where are your shoes? Oh, when I'm with you, I don't feel any pain. He looks at me like, that's not very smart. Then uh, he says, there's enough tapasya in the world that you don't have to put any more on yourself unnecessarily. What a nice realization. Sometimes we artificially renounce, but never encouraged artificial renunciation. There's enough tapasya in the world that we don't have to do anything else unnecessarily. So that's a wonderful pastime. You said that Prabhupada was like a forgiving father. And so many times. Can you say anything else? <coughs> he would say, uh, he would he would give an instruction, but at the end he would give a uh, a forgiveness. He said, "But you are young boys and girls; you have had no training. You know, we would do something, but you were young boys and girls; you have had no training." He always forgave us uh, for so many things. Even when we were trying to register the society in, in India, I followed the aims and objects of the Aurobindo, the logistics, we were able to uh, buy property and distribute books and make films and things like that. But Prabhupada wanted us to be registered and he went through the document Step by step, the first line said, the founder Acharya is A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. The second line I put, the founder Acharya shall have full veto power. Being Prabhupada, he said, there is no name here. There's, it means it's impersonal. The first line gave his name, but the second line said the founder Acharya, he said, who's founder Acharya? You? Brahmananda? Brahmananda got zapped 3,000 miles across the ocean for something he did years ago in New Brindaban when he claimed that Prabhupada was God. We had to fight that. I was one of the people who fought that, four of us. I'm crying. He says, fix it. On the weekend, I call the board of directors. We made an amendment. I go to the man on Monday. He wanted bakshis. He wanted a bribe. I never gave a bribe in India. I said, we have a meeting tonight with the CID and the newspapers. Do you want me to say you're, you want a bribe? You're fool number one, or you're just trying to break the law? No, no, I'll sign. He signed the document. I bring it to Prabhupada. I'm crying. Prabhupada, I didn't want to be founder Acharya. I know, but I could think that. He always forgave us. So many times uh, we would do some silly thing, and he always so kindly, like a father, forgave us. This is one of the qualities. People, people, a lot of the future generations know Prabhupada as the Acharya and great instructor and awe and reverence. But Prabhupada's actual self, when he was with you, was very comfortable, very sweet. He never let a joke go by, at least with me. Very nurturing. He knew exactly what to do at every time and every circumstance and every place. You, you were very close to Prabhupada and sometimes familiarity can come in and, and the disciple can become too casual. And he gave you a lot of personal association. So how did you deal with that? He never uh, became impersonal with me. He just encouraged our friendship and our 
time together. He he was never puffed up or artificial. The fact that I let him set the mood, that what his mood was in, does he want a joke? Does he want to be quiet? Does he want to write a letter to India Gandhi? Whatever his mood was, I would go along. So we were very compatible and very comfortable together. Now, I was going to tell you another pastime. Uh, sometimes we were a team, and when guests would come, I would make sure they had water and some prashadam and a place to sit. It was during the India-Pakistan War. We were in Delhi in a dharmshala. In Delhi, were covering their windows at night because the lights would show and the Pakistani bombers would bomb. Prabhupada refused to cover the windows. We had our evening kirtan and he didn't bother covering the windows. An ad hoc committee and said, Swamiji, why aren't you covering the windows? He said, you can't control your stomach ache, your toothpick. If Krishna wants to kill, nobody can save. And if Krishna wants to save, nobody can kill. They said, but Swamiji, what if the bomb should come? He said, you're not the controller. But Swamiji, what if the bomb should come? And I was standing up because I was making sure they had Prashadam. He looked up and he said, then I would see the bomb as Krishna. Krishna is everything to Prabhupada, even the bomb. It's a good day to die, some Native Americans say, meaning you've got to do everything purely, fully, in the moment. You may die at any moment. Don't take it for granted. I would see the bomb as Krishna. So I was so fortunate. I don't take it for granted, but I was so used to being with Prabhupada in this comfortable way, and he encouraged it. He liked that. He, he had enough yes man toadies in his life that he didn't need another one. He wanted somebody to tell him the truth. I would tell him the truth if there was something that was a little bit different in opinion. I was so fortunate to have this relationship when I first met him, they said, don't let Gurudas in, because when my foot was in the door, my New York self, I showed him cameras and everything. I was there every day. Govinda Dasi and Upendra said, don't let him in anymore. But when I went to see him, that's when they were in the kitchen. Oh, no, Gurudas is there again. But he never said, don't come in. Every time he saw me, it was a big oceanic smile or some kind of project we were working on together. I'm so fortunate to have Prabhupada in my life. It's changed me forever. And because I treat everybody this way, without, or without I try to be, see the common ground, I try to see the friendship. That's the best thing. And I also did this with Prabhupada and he reciprocated. Devotee means being friend to everyone, seeing good in everyone. So your Vedic care organization, um, my wife is a doctor and uh, we have had some devotees that have left their bodies and we have some devotees that are sort of volunteers. We have kind of a unorganized uh, care team but if we wanted to have some kind of facility or program you, does your organization offer you know guidance and stuff like that we do and why don't you contact me and one of the things we're doing this we had outreach teams which is easy someone gets sick you have petrol in a car and in your heart. It doesn't require much money. We assisted people in homes and hospitals. But in the pandemic, we decided we're going to have a health line, which we're launching, which is if someone is anxious 
frustrated, suicidal, whatever, call in. We have counselors right now, five or six days a week, we're launching it. It would mean your wife or whoever could would give two hours a week, one hour a week for people to call in. We also give them free medical advice. So these are the, the, the main programs we're doing right now in the pandemic is getting the hospital ready, uh, keeping in contact with our ambassadors around the world, which assess the people in need, the places we can uh, serve in and uh, fundraising. So please call me because your wife, if she's interested to become part of our, our health line team. And the other thing is, since you've been doing it sporadically, this is what we want. Nobody asked you to do it, it's heroic. Join with us, you won't be alone because we have an organization, albeit small, but we would be glad for you and your wife to contact us and let's see what we can do to serve together. Thank you. And we hope we can lure you to Houston when the things lighten up also. Uh, I think I would be so happy to do that. I see your faces looking at me and I'd want to meet you in person sometime. Does anybody else have any questions or comments? Thank you for the wonderful technology. Accept my humble obeisance. It's all glorious to Sula Prabhupada. So I accept my humble obeisance. Glorious to Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Unmuted. Hare Krishna. Um, I was wondering if there was any personal uh, personal instruction Srila Prabhupada gave you, specific ones that you uh, hold dear or which you'd like to share. Well, over the years, he gave me so many according to whatever I was doing. But the last instruction, I was in, I was in Lebanon. And uh, he sent a letter to me and he said, he said, you have done so much service for Krishna, you're blessed. That was his last instruction. But we did so much service together. It depended on where, where you know, if we were looking at a building, he would say, look for damages in the wall. Look for litigation that is not known when you buy a building. He instructed me how to account. Accounting means put it down immediately. Every little thing, uh, mustard oil in the morning for massage. Uh, so many <laughs> instructions, depending upon uh, what we were doing. Prashadam instructions, health instructions how to go about uh, meeting people. Uh, Gurudas asked that man to become life member. Well, Prabhupada, if you asked him to become life member, surely he would. No, no, I don't like anybody to say no to me. You ask him. You know, little things like that. Uh, so if, maybe if you have a specific category, I could tell you the instructions, but over the years, uh, okay, go to the American ambassador in Delhi on Sunday and ask him for a house for our American and European disciples. I go to his house. I go to the door. His wife is there. She kicks me out like I'm some sort of salesperson. I sit in the driveway. The ambassador comes on a Sunday. Oh, what are you doing in the driveway? Well, my Guru Maharaj, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami asked, uh, he wants me to talk to you. He takes me way out in the backyard. He had a little man cave away from his wife. 
He said, I'm sorry, my wife is rude sometimes. That's why I have this place here. What can I do for you? I said, we're disciples of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And because we're here in Delhi, Americans, uh, he wants us to, uh, you to give us a building. Well, I could see that he couldn't do it. Uh, it was a Sunday. He's not a real estate uh, person. My guru has plan B. Plan B is that uh, we can we can pay for an apartment in Delhi in any currency of the world. <clears throat> you want yen, you want peso, you want rails, you want dollars, you want euros. <laughs> so that was plan B. The other time we go to see the American ambassador. All the other ambassadors are waiting for a photo. He was enamored with Prabhupada and Prabhupada's telling him, we're not this body. He says, I don't call you Mr. Stripe Suit and you don't call me Mr. Orange Robes. And then Prabhupada instructed me to further it to get the donation of the tons of food, how to follow up. I mean, even though I knew a lot of stuff, when Prabhupada, he just sometimes put the cherry on top of the cake. So if you have a specific category, I might be able to answer what instruction. But I had so much association with them. He never kicked me out. He never kicked me out, except the train in Delhi. He did kick me out of the train when we were on the way to Bombay to, to start a temple in Delhi. He says, get down. Who will you take with you? That's another story. It's in my books. But besides kicking me out of the chain, he never kicked me out. And that was for some purpose. Okay. Where, where can someone get your book? Is it available through mail order or anything? No, contact me, gurudas at earthlink.net. gurudas at earthlink. Dot net. And also you can ask questions, you know, you, I'm approachable. Gurudas at earthlink.net. I just put a, put your email in the chat as well so that people can, uh, can copy it. Yes, you're the techno smart person. <laughs> Very good. We need you, you know. <laughs> Happy uh, I, I need you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anytime. Anytime. Let me know. <laughs> so, okay. So this is a very nice yatra. Uh, write me any questions. Uh, I'm, I'm here to serve you. And there's many, many of these stories in my books. More. And th they're really nice books, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, Gurudas Prabhu. Um, do we have time for one more question? I just saw one in the chat. Sure. sure. Okay. Uh, Sanchari Mataji, would you like to uh, ask the question yourself or, or would you like me to read? All right. Um, I guess I'll, I'll read then. Uh, so Sanchari Mataji writes, thank you Prabhu for sharing your heart with us. As you were speaking, I was thinking how powerful and pure the guru-disciple connection is. Even when the physical association of the guru isn't there, that love endures. In a way, the pandemic allowed us to have this taste of what it's like to not have the personal association of the guru and develop that faith. Can you please share how we can develop and deepen the connection to the spiritual master's body? Yes. And that's the point. Vipralamba is strong love and Vani is strong love. And although I'm fortunate, you're also fortunate because you've inherited this great movement. As I said, there was no movement. And we shouldn't take it for granted because we've set the foundation. So, of course, all the instructions are in his books. And in books like mine, which shows his personal self in many uh, 
different types of activities and events. He was so multifaceted and, as I said, open-minded and non-compromising simultaneously. He didn't compromise, but he would be flexible. When they took Juggernaut for a walk in San Francisco, he ran. I ran with him. We read, came to the park. Lord Juggernaut is there. He said, Lord Juggernaut comes out of the temple only once a year. We don't take him for a walk. But as long as we're here, let's sit down and chant. And I did the photo. His flexibility. So, of course, his books are instructive. But that's why it's also nice to read his disciples' books, because it shows the personal aspect of Prabhupada, as well as the awe and reverential. But instructions are there. And the other thing is we have each other. One of the most endearing principles that Prabhupada gave us is das anu das. We serve each other. This could change the world. It could save the world. So if we really see into the hearts of each other and want to see the success of each other, as well as ourselves then that's Krishna consciousness. We carry on with Prabhupada as how we cooperate with each other. That's what he said. If you love me, cooperate together. That's how we can carry on his legacy. Uh, Hare Krishna. And you can, if you have a question, give me, write me, you know, I'm here for you. We have each other. Maybe Thank sometime you. we could, sometime we can have you again on a more, you know, another topic or maybe in the future we can have you again. If you wish. If you wish. Anyway, we're so grateful. Um, you're a pillar. For, you've done so much for Prabhupada, and yet you, you're very unassuming. And we're honored that you took your time to share so much with us. And we look forward to more adventures in Krishna consciousness that you've inspired us to keep to the path of Prabhupada and Thank you so much. Maybe we can end and listen. Anyone has more? Well, thank you very much as well. Thank you, Prabhu. We would like to see you once the pandemic is over. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Yes. I would love to see you in person. Yes. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hare Krishna.